good. Yeah, and I think that's the entrepreneurial mindset that you guys all have. Um, to talk a little bit about that entrepreneurial mindset, you know, you started and, and grew your way through many companies. Um, you started, were, were part of the, the start of a startup, uh, but most of your career has always been coming in as the operational role, uh, if I'm not mistaken. For those of us thinking of starting a business just for the sake of starting a business, and you recommended that, hey, go work at a bigger company, go yeah. learn from mentors, how can they still be entrepreneurs um, within these companies? Yeah. yeah, great question. And, and um, you know, for me, it's kind of interesting. Up until I was sort of 35 or so in my career, um, I, I actually did work for mostly the bigger businesses and more established businesses. Since then, I've actually done both. So I've started, you know, three or four companies, um, and I've also joined some that were formed but very early stage. And I think the entre entrepreneurial mindset can show up regardless of, of what size or scale a company that you're involved in. Um, and I think that in some ways, it's, it's exactly what a lot of the bigger companies are looking for from um, younger uh, generations that are in their workforce. Uh, they're, they're wanting to cultivate and create opportunities for guys just like you where you can kind of bring that spirit and that approach to uh, their business so that they're not, you know, working in a stale environment where, um, you know, their business potentially is being run maybe the way that it was three or four or five years ago um, because the environment really doesn't allow for that. So I think, I think you actually can bring that to, that, that entrepreneurial uh, spirit can be brought to an established business. That being said, I also think that there's, there's really no replacement or there's no substitution for being able to try to launch something that is your own idea. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's an interesting concept. Sometimes you can do that inside of a bigger company. Um, in the company we have right now, we've got some, some ideas that are being launched internally by our employees who believe that there's a market opportunity that we can exploit but it happens to be happening inside of Zenefits rather than as a separate company. Occasionally those ideas take flight in such a way that they don't necessarily make sense inside of our company, but they potentially make sense mm. sort of as a spin out. And in those situations, um, while I hate losing great talent, uh, I gotta walk the walk, not just talk the talk. And so um, for a lot of those folks, we help them basically get involved with getting that business kind of, um, you know, fully formed and extricated out of, out of the core business that we have. Um, I think that is the way most tech companies will be operating over the course of the next 20 years. I think most of them understand that in order for us to be able to have great talent that is really motivated around trying to propel their career forward and basically um, scratch this entrepreneurial itch, you've got to allow them to be able to demonstrate some of that in a less high risk way inside our businesses, and then eventually provide them with the opportunities or the avenues to be able to launch those businesses outside as, as, as it makes sense. So how, how do you guys foster that at Zenefits? Um, I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of ways to sort of go about it. First of all, like I said before, um, it's one thing to talk the talk, you have to walk the walk. And so at some point when you've got um, great talent that wants to go do something, but it clearly is not inside or within our mission, um, we have to have, uh, I think, the, the courage and in some ways the commitment level to recognize that it's time to let that person or that team spread their wings, potentially even if it means them leaving the company. And so um, we've got a number of examples of where we have walked the walk and we've actually you know, followed through on our commitment to go do that. And what's interesting is that's been a really, really good thing, I think, not only for those entrepreneurs, but also for the company. Because what's occurred is inside, uh, we find people um, you know, daring to think differently about solving some of the problems, daring to think more entrepreneurially about how can I kind of you know, build something potentially here inside the business, at least initially, to see what could be possible. Mm -hmm. um, conversely, we've also had some of those folks go on to do some other things and then return back into the company. 
um, for a second swing at it, which I think has been a great thing for not just our business, it's a great thing for our customers, it's a great thing for our product, uh, because at that point we don't just have an insular view of what we're building or of our value proposition or, or the problems that we're trying to solve. We, we have people that have you know, been outside the company, they've seen some of these problems from a different perspective, and now they're back in the company helping us to try to solve some of these things. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of it is around, as I say, you know, having the, the, the I guess, the, the courage or the audacity to let people uh, experiment inside your company, knowing that that's gonna be both a good thing for us in the short term, but it's potentially even gonna be good for us in the long term. Right. You t and that this relates to culture a little bit. You talked a little bit about culture before, how Zenefits had a different culture and you came in and tried to change some things. What is that culture now? And what are some of the things that you actually implemented to make sure that this big boat of you know, 600, 500 people actually switch over yeah. to a new culture? Well, so the first thing, you know, with, within the first couple of weeks when you, when you sort of lay off uh, half the organization and you kind of do a complete reset organizationally, there's a few things that um, are sort of just fundamental that kind of need to change. So one of the things that, that we did immediately is we changed our physical location. Mm. We, we left uh, a, a very good building in downtown San Francisco and just went to a different location because we needed, in my view, we needed a change of venue. We needed a change of scenery. We needed to kind of physically reset people's brain about where they work and, and what that place looks like and how it operates every single day. So we, we physically did that. The other thing that we, that we really focused on was, was trying to make sure that we were a lot more, um, I'd say, overt and, and um, intentional about the values that the company has, how, we, how, we're gonna, how we're gonna behave. You know, when we talk about culture, by the way, I always think it's kind of interesting to find out, you know, when you, when, if you're asked to describe culture, you know, what do you say? And, and we won't go through that right now, but when you do that, a lot of times people are a little bit like, yeah, culture, really? That's, and typically I find that there's a lot of kind of over-architected, you know, overthought kind of definitions. Culture for us at Zenefits, um, based on my definition, is simply how we do things here. You know, it's not more complicated than, this is how we operate, this is how we do things here. And that has big implications. Everything from how do we interact with each other, how do we treat each other, mm -hmm. to how do we treat the outside world, how do we interact with partners and regulators and auditors and all the rest of it. Um, but it also has a lot to, to say about, you know, how are we gonna handle accountability? How are we gonna handle product deadlines? How are we gonna handle, you know, the pressures and the challenges that every tech company has? And so we've tried to reset a lot of that. It starts with some basics around we're gonna operate with integrity on everything we do. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, I, I operate with, with, the, with the company from a place of radical transparency. I just believe in, um, you know, if you were the employee group, you all voted with your feet to be here, and so by definition, you deserve complete transparency around what's going well, what isn't going well, what are our challenges, what are we doing about them, you know, um, if there's organizational changes or somebody's been fired or whatever else, you know, it requires some, some discussion, some explanation. And as a result, I think the company gets stronger because of it. When things are going really, really well, we've, we've obviously, the last year and a half or so, we've been doing really, really well. When things are going really, really well, it's really easy. Um, you know, when things are not going so well or there's a problem or there's a hiccup, then that's when that's tested. Mm -hmm. And so I find that um, one of the best things the company can do is to model this transparency, which then makes it more of a cultural, almost imperative for everybody that, yeah, that's just how we operate. We're gonna, we're gonna shoot each other straight. We're gonna be really clear about what's working. We're not gonna back down or be afraid to examine what isn't working, and we're gonna share what those results are. And so there's kind of this continuous improvement mindset that kind of gets developed as a result of that. So those are some of the reset things that we've put in place for the company. And, you know, this last year is, has, has caused us to be in a really good spot because both that level of intensity and that level of accountability to one another has caused us to execute really well. 